It's Wednesday, the 29th of motherfucking July. What have you done all month? Let's spark up a number out of respect. Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by DraftKings. Listen, whether you like it or not, you're gambling your life right now just to go down to the store for the corner milk. You're gambling with your life just to go down to, just when you leave the fucking house. So why not put a little bit of money on DraftKings? Like tomorrow, Thursday, you got the NBA's back live from Disney World in the bubble. How many? That's what we got to bet on. How many people are going to escape from the fucking bubble? That's the bet. But tomorrow night, you got the Clippers versus the Lakers and the Pelicans versus the Jazz. What we're going to do here at DraftKings to celebrate is give you 25 bucks. Joey Howe, place a $25 bet on which team will be crowned champion at the end of the NBA season. Do it before tip-off tomorrow, and DraftKings will give you a $25 bet to use on the first two games in the season. Not to mention, new users get a bonus of up to $1,000 just for showing up. So to get in on the action, download DraftKings Sportsbook now and use code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, plus for limited time, just for the church family. All new users get a sign-up bonus of a Gino LaRue. That's a 1,000, that's a fucking 10,000 fucking ducats. Whatever you want to call it, rubles, I don't give a fuck. That's cash, <laughs> bitch. Listen, you get a thousand dollars, a grand when you get DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Church. Download the app. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. And here's the part the lawyers make me say. You know these fucking lawyers. You gotta do this shit. You gotta be twenty one. And you gotta be in New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. Deposit bonus. Requires a 25 times playthrough. Restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Listen, you got a gambling problem? There's help for you. You call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or if you're in Indiana, Indiana, you call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. You tell them Uncle Joey sent you. But if you don't have a gambling problem, get the DraftKings Sportsbook app and let's motherfucking get down. Let's use code CHURCH. C-H-U-R-C-H. Take this fucking mule, Lee. How long does this take here? What's going on? Oh, shit. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. No this more. Of the fucking shit. It's all over. Going in like fucking the ring. You understand me? Welcome to church, mother. Welcome to church, cop suckers. Yeah. Okay, Quigley's in the studio. Finally, oh, she got over the fucking, uh, she got over the herpes. It was a long, it was a long three months in the Whatever. hospital. A couple transfusions. That's then they, right. Then they gave her like fucking uh, Charlie Sheen blood by mistake. And that it cured me. really fucked it up. <laughs> Those cures you. You everything. look beautiful. I do. You look back. Have. Yeah. Thank the, you, man. The hair looks nice. Really? Thank you. you I look haven't... happy. I can tell you got a boyfriend. You can? I can tell. It's because I post different. I haven't been posting as much. I no. it's weird having to think about somebody else. You know, I just yeah. It's weird also saying I have a boyfriend. I've never really admitted it completely. I say like, oh, the, I'm seeing this guy, but yeah. How long you been with him now? Actually, it's so funny. We like we met years ago, but we didn't connect at all. I wasn't really in, honestly. I thought he was too nice for me. Like he has a very nice reputation and i thought he'd be too straight edge and uh but then i don't know we started like dming a little and it was right before quarantine we really started talking a lot i actually was kind of pitching a project to him which is hilarious like i wasn't interested he wasn't flirting and i wasn't flirting we were just talking business and then uh the project kind of fell through but then we just kept talking and then i was lonely during quarantine and i think i posted something like uh Hey, I'm like bummed out tonight. Somebody cheer me up. And he texted me and was like, can I come to LA and take you out to dinner? And that's how it started. And that was like at the beginning of quarantine. And then like quarantine. Where the fuck did he take you to dinner? It was well, close. he just bought, we just post made it. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't like hook up that right away or anything like that. That's what's weird about this quarantine is that we ended up FaceTiming like every day 
for hours. So you, I got to know him better than I've ever gotten to know any guy I've dated before I slept with him, definitely. But even, you know, it's like we became friends, really. And, I, and here's what's different. I knew I liked him because I didn't send him any hot photos. I didn't flirt. Like, there was no, like, sexting. I wouldn't. I was, like, bashful. It was so weird. <laughs> like, so like, you played your cards right. I didn't mean to. I just, he's such a nice guy that I, like, like, I was actually worried that when we had sex, it would be too nice. I even told him that. Like, once we started to really, because we kind of knew we'd be together before we even had sex. How weird is love? It's so fucking weird. We it's so weird. About, I did a whole podcast on it. How you live your life, you hook up with people, you think you're not doing something. All of a sudden, you walk into a laundry mat. Some girl <laughs> looks at you. You say hello. Yeah. Next thing you're going for coffee. Next thing you know, you're going for dinner. She knows somebody you know. You go to the same acting class. Yeah. And bam! You were like, "Fuck! I've been single for nine months. I haven't gotten laid in fourteen months." <laughs> You know, I've never like, had that, but like, yeah. You know, yeah I, dog, if, if you listen to this podcast, we've all gone on dry oh, streaks. Yeah. yeah, that you start questioning what the fuck is wrong with you. Like, yeah, I went on one from August of eighty four to July of eighty five. I love that you know the exact. Oh, it, oh you know by the day. Almost. Nine months of <laughs> celibacy. Shit. Nine months of on purpose. No, no, like <laughs> I was just. Just getting those. Wow. You know, you got to suck a thousand dicks to find the prince. That's true. And, <laughs> That's true. You know, you got to you gotta kiss a thousand frogs. No, you don't. You got to suck a thousand dicks. I just dicks tweeted that. We were just to, talking to about To find that. the best dick that That's suits so you. so true, man. It's some so of them true. taste like hummus. Some of them taste like shoe horns. I mean, you know, <laughs> shoe horns. I like the guy, but his dick tastes like a shoe horn. I haven't I had a shoe horn dick, but I do have to say that that is one thing during the last six months. There were a few. Before this guy, I went on a dating streak where I kept dating guys that were like, progressively worse like you would have been so disappointed in me like they were i thought i was getting better yeah last time i saw you you were no with no miss america no mr america yeah you were <laughs> some guy america. with his shirt cut off he stunk like onions i was yeah and you, the... you brought him up to me and i'm like get this get away from me. that's hilarious i don't even remember who it was. he had a million twitter <laughs> followers i'm like i don't give a fuck if he's got oh that guy know, that's following him is fucking <laughs> leprosy mm -hmm. That's what's following that guy is stink. I forgot about That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? But okay. dudes don't want... Let me ask you. Can I ask you a question? I don't want to get dirty with you. But no, do it. When you shower, both of you guys, when you wash your dick and your balls, do you wash under your balls? Absolutely. Yeah. Like well? All the way. Under the balls. Pick them up. Under yeah. and scrub it. I pull the skin back on the helmet. I polish out because sometimes you get that goo around the helmet what? and it sticks to <laughs> women's <laughs> mouth. If you're fucking non-Jewish and you pull your skin back, you get that little fucking helmet jizz on really? the side. Really? I've never seen Sometimes that. Sometimes I got a little piece of toilet paper stuck in there or oh, something. Yeah. I'm uncircumcised, so. How are you uncircumcised? Listen, don't ask questions. <laughs> so I, I pull the dick back, I scrub it good, and then I have a special loofah. Mm. A dick loofah? Just for my asshole. Oh, yeah, you got I, to. I get the special loofah and I cut. But I've eaten plenty of assholes to see when an asshole has had road damage. Like, I've seen assholes that have not. They smell good, but they've had road you gotta damage. You got to get in. Really, so what I do yeah. is I never wanted that. You got to get the loofah. It's like three quarters of your finger, and you scrub that inside. You get all that wait. molecules. Wait, and, wait, 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 wait. What's the loofah that you're using? Is it like shaped like a finger? No, I cut it. I you designed cut it, it like, myself. Did... I'm thinking of putting it on the market. But you I put think it on you your should. finger? I didn't know you put it on your yeah, finger. Yeah, the asshole for the loofah. It's like a puppet. It's an asshole and then puppet. I boil it to get all the asshole germs off it. Like I turn the water really hot. Oh, you boil I it. I dry and I let it sit. <laughs> you got to take care of your asshole. Asshole health is number one. I agree. I started buying those ear syringe things yeah, to use down to use there. Yeah, animals and shit. Because yeah. my gay friend, I thought it was enough to just scrub in there. No, not enough. I guess gay guys, they don't fuck around. No, if they don't. Want, if you want info on assholes, <laughs> you put your gay side aside. He'll tell you That's everything. That's what I did. That's you know, what I this did. morning I farted at for CVS. I read it. Oh my god, there was a guy behind me, and he was starting to shake, even with the mask on. <laughs> I would have blown Dr. Fauci right off the fucking chair. He would have quit. Yeah, would. He would have said, in all my scientific life, There's probably I've vapor. never smelled anything <laughs> like this. 
This smells worse than Wuhan. Oh, it seems like God. you ate the bat that killed the Wuhan bat. Yeah, I have to say, I read that. You tweeted about it, and when I read oh it, my God. I was like, I, had, I can't wait. I couldn't wait to run back to the car. Because <laughs> it was ch- I had to run away from the fart. And then when I got in the car, I was trying to get into the car, and I put my mask on, it disappeared. You could see like a little COVID <laughs> dust. There was some Mexican lady like looking around like something happened. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how I know that you love me, because I've only heard you fart once. Do you know that? Once in this room, one time in our whole friendship, you've never farted. There's some people you don't want to fart around because you might lose them. So what you, <laughs> what is, I was going to say, what are you going to say about me? Everybody farts around me. No, one, no mean, one else has ever farted around me. Yes, they You just bring it out of me. I look at you and I feel like farting. Oh I'm terrified God. of farting in front of people. I, really? Yeah, especially any guy. Like, really. Even if I don't like him, even if I'm not, like, I'm just afraid that they'll never want to fuck me ever again. Eventually, it's funny. Once you fart in front of a man, it's all over. That means I. Fu- <laughs> that means I fucked you in the ass. I came on your eyeballs. That's true. That means I met your mother, your father, That's your grandfather, true. your retarded sister, <laughs> the one that's missing a leg. She lost them in Vietnam. You know, once that all, once you got everybody under control. A woman will fucking cut a fart one night during some fucking. It's not episode. our fault because once you've been in the butt hole, you stretch it out a little. It's just air passing. We're not used to. I don't do anal unless I'm in love, 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 like ever. So I'm not used to having a stretched out butthole. Twenty five hundred. What does that mean? Twenty five hundred for the asshole. No. Yeah, me. Yeah. Oh no, I not worth a, it. I got a guy in Sherman Oaks. He's no. looking for assholes. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> 25 grand, I would think about 25 it. 2500 no. for an asshole. One pop, no. you go home, he gives you a little swab of a no, smoothie. It's not worth it's it. It's like giving blood at the American Red Cross. Not even no close. Big deal. <laughs> no, it's not. They give you a little badge. It's not even close. <laughs> Do you eat cookie after two? They give you, if you're faint. Some orange juice and a snickerdoodle. You know, <laughs> if you're faint, they fucking, you know, whatever. I don't think, man, I don't know. I, that really scares oh. me. Anal freaks me out because of the whole. You know, but as a man, let me tell you what the problem is with anal. Tell me, please. To me, to me, I'm gonna tell you how it worked for me, just so you know. You know, as I was, you you didn't learn sex education in school. You learned sex education from gorillas when I was growing up. Yeah, those guys that are older than me were gorillas, and they're like, "Wait till you fuck them in the ass." No, that's the whole thing. And I'm like, really? So I don't know. It took me years to finally like ask somebody. I'm not going to tell you who, well, you don't know who it was anyway. But I got to tell you something. <laughs> Do I? I got to tell you something. For, it, it was like smoking crack. It was it's, so good? No, it's okay, but it's just too much work. Unless really? you get fucked in the ass on a regular, it's too much work. I got to lube it and then put it in, and then you're holding my thighs with your hands. Just a little bit, a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. Stop right yeah. there. Yeah. Stop right there. I might shit. And then that, <laughs> I might shit? Once they tell you you have to shit, then you have to start pounding their ass and playing with that <laughs> little monkey. You get that clit and you work it like a little fucking like a like a like a squeegee board. You just keep that <laughs> monkey and you keep pounding the ass. And a woman's actually suffering. I not that, always not suffering, but she's making weird noises that she wouldn't fucking <laughs> use. You're either make. really suffering or it feels awesome, but it's hard to tell the difference from the sound. Well, if you got two fingers in your pussy and I'm working and I'm pulling your hair. I'm creating diversions. It's like I'm throwing a bomb <laughs> over the there. That's the key. That is the key. When you fuck somebody in the ass, you gotta. If you just fuck them in the ass, no. like you like it, baby. Oh yeah, I love it. I grew up all. It was in my high school I yearbook. Grew- <laughs> I can't wait to get fucked in the ass. Nobody likes getting fucked in the ass. It's true. No, you like it, but here's the problem: uh-huh. if a girl lets you fuck her in the ass without lube and tells you it feels good, she's lying. Like it does not feel good. If a guy puts even like two or three fingers in there without lube, it doesn't feel. You have to lube it. You have you to. Lube have it. to. I, see, I didn't know this. I she lubed it. Yeah. I th- put it in. It was drama, and then you come and the cum comes out like chocolate milk. Oh. Like it's like so like you who like light chocolate milk because it mixed oh, up God. with some ass that was in there. And at the end of the night, I goes, "Was this all worth it?" Like she came out, and there was no eye contact for an hour. <laughs> You know, was it really worth fucking so many ass? Is so it? I never really did it unless a woman said, stick it in there, fucking big boy. Interesting. And then you give him a stab in the ass. And again, it wasn't my main thing. Yeah. I'd rather lick your ass and finger you and play with you and then pop it into your pussy and then when I'm about to nut, 
pull it out, slap it into your mouth. You could taste that pussy. And yeah. shoot that hot jizz in your mouth. That's a party. Women love that. That's and true. And they'll suck it dry, and then they'll start all over again. <laughs> so that cock is back at attention. You flip them over, and you take boogie woogie to town. You know boogie what I'm saying? Woogie. <laughs> no, but you're totally right. Honestly, the problem is the ass is limiting because once it's in there, you can't put it anywhere else safely. Oh, no. I sound Listen, like such a prude Kate, now. I love you to death. You're my girl. I put it in your ass. I'm popping it after I come put it in your mouth. You're, fl- you're tasting what I'm tasting. You can't do that. Who, who, who said? Wait, what, how are you tasting? Who t- the, who the, how are you who tasting? Your tongue isn't in as deep as your dick. Right. You're not tasting what's on the end of your dick. Not me. You. Not me. You're the one that wanted it in the ass. You, you said, taste it. <laughs> you said you know you're what tasting saying? what I'm tasting. No, 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 no. I tasted your asshole. I licked it from behind. Now yeah, I, but you I, tasted now I, the edge. Now That's... I jizzed in there, and now I'm popping it out. It's halfway at attention. No. And you got to pop it in your mouth you out of respect like a chocolate bar. I mean, I'm scared. It goes, it goes and that's how you get mouth. COVID. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. No, that's <laughs> that's how you avoid. Listen. That's how I you can, avoid COVID. I can have Chinese. <laughs> I can have 20 Chinese people cough on me. I can eat an asshole. No COVID. It disintegrates. It breaks down the barrier. It goes into your throat. And it just bubbles like alcohol. <laughs> it's like. It's like putting fucking uh, asshole juice. It's like putting uh, what's emergency. That, what's that stuff you put on peroxide? Hydrogen I, peroxide. It just bubbles. It oh. just bubbles out of your ass. You see it. You wipe it, and there's the COVID. That's it. Nobody knows nothing. It's so gross, but I don't know. It just all free butt stuff. Just freaks me out. I haven't banged somebody in the ass in thirty years. Well, so it, it, it's been since around the nineties when I lived in Boulder. That was the last time the I The 90s? Yeah, when I lived in Boulder. Holy shit. That's when I, you know, that's when I was doing coke to the level where women tell you, like the exorcist, put it in my ass. Like, yeah. And you know, and you're like, really? <laughs> I need this. And then I heard, and then I had a, a friend of mine, I didn't tell him about my experiences, but he was telling me that he fucked a girl in the ass with me and she shit on his bed. Uh, it happens. She couldn't stop shitting. Oh, I've never heard that. That's happen. when, listen, that's when I, that's when I stab you. I put the blanket around you. I put, I put, I put, I put like a burrito. I take that shit and I put it on your fingerprints so I can't identify you. And I drop you off over one off the 170 up there. Oh, Joe. You can't shit on my bed. That's disrespect. I mean, you know, even Jesus will kill you. Sometimes. You I don't think that's true, actually. I think Jesus uh, will forgive you. You can't shit on a man's bed. I heard that this chick took a tremendous shit. Really? Like, as soon as he took, he, he was banging something and his dick was getting smaller. And finally, it just he just saw something brown. <laughs> what if it was just, getting smaller. And he smelled shit. He's like, "What's going on?" And oh. she's like, "Oh my god, that dick made my ass want to shit." I don't know. So wait, so, wait. So this... why is it better to be on your dick than on your bed? I'd, ra- I'd rather have it on my bed than on my dick. No way. What are you talking about? You can rinse you, your you dick. You want somebody to drop a turd on your bed? No, but I don't want it to be on my body. But your body, you can wash easily. Your I can bed. throw away that sheet or throw, burn that bed. Until my, my dick is always going to be my dick. You're going to that night change all the sheets after you fuck the girl? You haven't even, have you even eaten an ass yet? No. no. Well, kind of. Kind of. I did look at ass at, with George. With oh, that's at, right. At the strip club. club. I forgot. He sucked the cork, which isn't the same so thing. <laughs> that's it's, what I'm saying. It's yeah. better. You don't get the whole flavor. Oh. Yeah, you got to put it in your mouth and chew Wait, it you like, really like, sucked like a gum breaker. She had, a, she had her butt plug in on stage and it looked... That's uh, it. You didn't even. So you didn't eat an ass. You licked a butt. I looked around in the butt. Yeah, I, there was. It was an area. I, I still don't. I'm so disappointed that we've gone through a whole quarantine and you haven't eaten one ass. You uh, believe this? No, I honestly. He has I can't. not. Not. He didn't gain weight. He's just backed up with sperm. <laughs> He's backed up with sperm. He gained oh, sixty terrible. pounds of sperm. Lee, what the fuck? Have you fucked during quarantine? No. I don't no. Know. No nothing. one. No. And I beg him every day, call this one, call that one, call milkshake. Dude. You got to call three a day and eventually you want to crack. You don't trust what it? What don't you trust? Well, okay. What's going to happen to you? You get COVID. You're going to go down for four days and you'll be all right. I don't know. I mean, his health is like, yeah. <laughs> he takes a hit of a joint. Can you imagine him on FaceTime? I'm telling you, I'm going to be all right. I'll be back in three days. <laughs> they got him with a ventilator. And another line coming in from In-N-Out Burger. I from mean. From fucking just little shakes and stuff. Honestly, this is the easiest time to get laid yeah, in the history of man. he's been scared. I've been begging him to pull the trigger. First of all, you told me you'd kill me if I got COVID. That's an expression. If you get COVID, <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. I'll poison you at the hospital. And they'll put it as COVID. I'll shoot this chemical I got in your toe. If you get COVID, call me because I just want to get it over with. 
Wouldn't it be great to just have it and then you? No, not you. you can get it again. Are you sure? Yes. How do they know? Because people have gotten it twice. <laughs> they have. Yeah. People have gotten it twice. I didn't know that. You don't want to talk to those people ever again. Shh. If you know somebody got COVID <laughs> yeah, no twice, <laughs> you take that motherfucker out of your phone <laughs> and you put COVID block on yeah. it. With two syringes, so when he calls, the call goes directly to the COVID institute. I haven't even opened Tinder. I haven't done shit. Are you sure this is true that people have gotten COVID twice? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. There's people saying it. I, I feel like true I don't know what's true and what's not because there's so it's like only been around for not even a year, right? And like there's so many stories, and every news outlet reports something different, and I don't know what's political and what's real. Like I'm not, I'm not questioning it. I have no fucking idea. All I know is this, Kate. All I know is if somebody was to have it. Yeah. You should have got it. I should have it. You've been to Vegas. I should have it. Nashville. Yep. Phoenix. Phoenix. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Totally. You went around, so I don't know how you protected yourself. I agree. The alcohol has a, a, a health issue. The alcohol, open I think, that door tequila. A little bit. Once you said Phoenix, now you got to open it a little bit more. <laughs> I really th- I think it's the air. I think if you're in open air spaces, you're okay. But she <laughs> wasn't in open air space. She no. was inside in Phoenix. I mean, and she was inside in Minneapolis. That's a mall of America. I yeah, might have true. had it though. Like, that's what I can't figure out. Because okay, here's what I don't get. Like, re- do you remember around like February, right before this, a lot of comics were sick. Like, I had to cancel a show. I remember Monarch canceled a show. We had tons of people call. In fact, the last night I was at the comedy store that you were there, somebody canceled because Dean Del Rey went up. So he came in and went up. So like. I kind of wondered if, because how did we not all catch it? We all share microphones. Yeah, some people, uh, they, I mean, it started months before in China. So, yeah, some people, you can get a test to see if you have the antibodies. I know, but it's 50%, they say. So, you don't even know. I took the blood test, and they said that the blood test is good, but you got to swab the mouth and the nose because they're respiratory symptoms. Yeah, I so did the nose one. It wasn't that bad. It's, it was annoying, but. Yeah. I wanted, to, the, my thing is just like, it's so weird traveling because oh, I, mean, I wouldn't do it literally. But here's what's weird is like we live in California. I go to Phoenix. I drove because they asked me to. They were like, don't fly because of COVID. So I drove the whole way across California. You can't pee. There's no public restrooms in California at gas stations, truck stops, anywhere. Denny's. You can get food. You can't pee. So I had to keep peeing in parking lots car washes, wherever I could find. Then you get to Phoenix, and, like, every bar is packed. The pools are packed. It's like, it doesn't make sense because everything's different. Or even airport to airport. Some airports are hand dryers. Some are paper towels. Like, I don't understand what. How are the airports looking today? I mean, the, my last two flights were half full. Maybe a little less than half. Like, uh, most people didn't have a whole row, but they had, like, a seat between. Masks. You got to wear one to get on. You don't have to keep it on, but most people do. But then they still serve water and chips. No real food or drinks. No alcohol. Really? Yeah, that's what's so bizarre is like you can take your mask off to drink water, but not alcohol. So like in some ways, okay, this I'm not like this is like not to be a conspiracy theorist, but I kind of feel like all the billionaires are going to come out way on top. Because you go to any restaurant anywhere in the country right now, and they give you a QR code to scan for a menu. And they say it's so you don't have to touch it. But then you can order online. So it's like they're going to cut servers. And then they're not serving anything on the planes because COVID, but they'll give you water and chips. Like, what's the fucking difference between a drink and a cup of water? It's like, it feels like they're trying to get rid of employees. Like, yeah. if that's how I feel. I really feel like the people at the top, like the top... Well, not even 1%, like half of 1% will be even richer and everybody else will be unemployed. I have a buddy who does, it's called distressed restructuring. That's okay. what he calls it. And he said like 75% of the small businesses aren't going to reopen. Like he told me that at the beginning. And all the, everything everything that's staying open are the main the big chains. Everything else is closed. All the small things. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm not like, don't get me wrong. Like I, my mom has lupus and a my whole family is like autoimmune pretty much. So I can't go home. My mom would die if she got it. But like, so I know it's a real thing, but it's just, it it doesn't make any sense how it's like different from state. To, it it's just, just makes whole, no sense. It's political on both sides. Like in Massachusetts, I, cause I'm, I, I call my mom. If I go back to Massachusetts, 
I have to get a hotel room for two weeks. Right. Other and if I don't, they charge me five hundred bucks a day. But what if the hotel fucking maid has it and she just well, yeah, they don't come. They don't come into the room. There's no housekeeping. There's no room service. There's room service in some states. (laughs) That's what's weird. And there's no more coffee stands. I know lobbies. You're right. And that destroys me. Except some, the last place I was, I was in uh, Nashville. They had it behind the counter. So, like, you could ask the desk clerk for a coffee, but you can't get it. It's just, it's just weird. Like, you know what's funny? Every airport has different standards, but you know the one thing that's universal? You can use a water fountain at every airport, which to me, it seems like the dirtiest thing. I don't even use water. Do you use water fountains at the airport? That's so gross. No, you bring your own water. Not yeah. Not some people. But there's people in line to use the water fountain still. So it's like, I mean, it's transferred through liquid. I don't know. All I know is you can't catch it from sex. Now, let me ask you this. I know you have a boyfriend now. I was, I was genuinely wondering this. If you, went on a, uh, if you went on an app, would you like just be like, listen, we're fucking, but we're not kissing? Like that's, No. That's, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd kiss somebody right now. I would fuck them, but I don't think I'd kiss them. Well, before the boyfriend, I dated a little... When this first, because we got shut down, what, March 13th or Mm -hmm. 12th or something? Like, me and him weren't together together for a little while. I'd kiss him if we were dating, but, like, if I met someone at a bar, I wouldn't kiss him that night, I don't think. Well, I wouldn't meet anyone at a bar, because there's no bar. But, although, there's restaurants. I guess you're right. I went out with a guy. I did a lot of COVID dating, which is, like, someone sends you food, and you FaceTime while you eat it. Oh, we guys, uh. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. One guy sent me boa, a steak. Your face is hilarious. See, this is what would have happened to me if I tried to date, just buying a girl a steak you know, and I getting mean, a thank you. I mean, Kate, I knew you were down. Everybody was down. <laughs> I Everybody know. Everybody was scared. Fears were up. Tensions were up. I was so depressed, Joey. And we all found different ways to cope with them. You know, I have a wife. I got a family. I thought about all the single people. I was miserable. At 9 o'clock at night, my mind would go into hell. And I would think about Dean and Lee and Steve Simone and you and fucking, you know, people who live by themselves all day. It was rough. Because, yeah, in the daytime, you could take a ride to the post office and you could stop by the corner and yell at somebody. But <laughs> once seven That's what I do. <laughs> you know, 7 o'clock is when a comic comes to life. That's what it uh, was. And w- once you do comedy for five or six years, at 6 o'clock, if you're a comic, Wake up. while you're eating dinner, something happens to you. People start talking to you and you don't hear their words because you're thinking about your 8.30 spot yeah. and your 10.30 spot. Then you find your quiet place. And like, like, nothing bothers me more when I go into the bedroom before a set. Like, when I tell my wife, I gotta go to the comedy store. And she's like, oh, okay. And I go into, I lay out my clothes, I put my socks on, out. Yeah. I lay my underwear, my shirt. Once I jump in that shower, that whole process is getting me ready. Yeah. Okay, once I go in the shower, dog, if you come in there with a piece of pussy, I wouldn't get a heart on because I am thinking I know so what you much mean. about comedy and how I'm going to do tonight and how I'm going to try this joke first at the end. You're April. excited. Yeah. You get such excitement. There's times my wife will come in and go, before you leave, don't forget. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. I don't even hear you. Yeah. Because I am so deep in my thoughts. Like, you ever come out of the shower and forget to brush your teeth because you were so deep in your thoughts? Not you, exactly. You, but you I forgot know to scrub your ears. <laughs> Yeah. You forgot to put or conditioner wash your hair around. twice or three times. Yeah, yeah. like I yeah. do that all the Me time. Too. Like, God damn it. I didn't loof in my asshole. You know, I got to go back in there now because I was thinking Cut about. another sponge. I'm thinking <laughs> about what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm thinking about the drive to the store, the improv, the, the, the theater in Chicago. You know, yeah. once six o'clock comes, when you're a comic, I don't understand if people know what happens to you. But it's like if you guys they are just going to know. your job. They don't know unless It's they like can. having a job. No, yeah. we're no special than anybody else. I know. If you're not, if you're a plumber, and in the morning you're like, I have a new construction job today. I'm fucking excited. Quit your job. If you're an electrician and you're like, <laughs> man, I'm going to do some saddles today at work, something <laughs> different. 
you quit your job. If you wake up in the morning, you're like, man, I can't wait to put that partition up and put that. that you thing mean if up. you don't feel that way, if quit you don't your job. feel that way, yeah, quit yeah, your yeah. job. I agree. But I think there's a difference between being excited and like not saying you're nervous, but like. It's like I, I, to me, it's like going to a big meeting. Like that's what it would be similar. You're to. You're preparing like, mentally. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. going through the motions. It's kind of like an. But athlete, I do it for whatever. everything. Like, yeah, you do it for everything. Like yeah. Okay, when you go to the AT and T store, for me it's Sprint. When I go to the Sprint store, I look at those people and I go. First off, I give them always give them ten stars, because they put up with shit you've never yeah. even heard of. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've sat there a thousand of times. Yeah. Not now. Now my phone looks like it got run over by a truck. <laughs> Because I'm on the COVID fucking plan. <laughs> you don't want to go in there. It's true. Because you know there's COVID in there like a motherfucker. That's why I'm wearing a hat tonight. Seven yeah. inches of roots. I'm like, when can so, I get this done? <laughs> so, you know, you, you want to go in there and do the phone. You ever go into that place and somebody really, really takes care of you? Yeah. Like, you're like, I don't have my pen. And she's like, hold on. Boom, boom. And all of a sudden she starts hitting numbers. And she's like, what phone do you want? This. And all of a sudden she goes, this one I'm going to do is save you $14 on this. Just get this package, and you feel like amazed, amazed, yeah. like that yeah. somebody's doing their fucking job. Yep. That person goes to work every day to help people. Now, no disrespect to nobody. That cunt that came on TV and I'm crying, the nurse, and said, "I didn't sign up for this." Listen, I'm sorry. You took an oath. Yeah, you did. When I when I sit here with you and I go, I think I'm going to become a nurse, <laughs> and then I get down and somebody goes, "All right, your first job is to clean assholes." You never even thought about that as a nurse. No. But if you want to get to Section A, you got to go to Mr. McGillicuddy, who's built like me, <laughs> pull him to the side. You smell my farts, pick up my leg, oh. put a bucket under there, talk to me while I shit, and then wipe my fucking ass. It takes a certain type of individual. Oh, yeah. To care. We have a gay friend, Eric. He was working at an old folks' home during this. There was nights I talked to him. He was just getting home at midnight, and he was supposed to get off at 7. Oh, yeah. And me he too. wasn't flying around sucking dicks. He told me in his heart that he, <laughs> he was putting, he was making yeah. sure those patients were taken care of yeah. correctly. Yeah. You know, the guy from Boston this week, some doctor of uh, COVID died, a 40-something-year-old I doctor that. died. They're putting their life on the line. My stepsister, she works mm -hmm. at a, a nursing home, or a senior care facility, and like she works her day, and then at the end, she hangs out with the COVID patients that are like critical, because they have no one. They're alone. There's she no can one. put on a hazmat suit and hang out with They're them. They're no one. Yeah. They're new, they got the new FaceTime app. COVID FaceTime. Is that true? Yeah. Like, you just, if you got COVID, you fucking... Shut up. You're not like serious. like screens and all your cousins. <laughs> it's not an app. It's just that that's how you, that's how you have to watch people die now. And they sing songs on Facebook. Joe. <laughs> they sing songs. Kumbaya, my lord. That's Kumbaya. Yeah, right. Then there's there's a frame. That, there's a border. There's a, always board. that one nephew. Uncle Joe, am I going to get the piano? <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna get the piano? He's on the <laughs> ventilator. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my god! I haven't fucking even paid for it yet. You're taking me the fucking piano. So. Oh, it is crazy. The whole thing is fucking weird. I can't even talk about it because it's become like, it's become the new like Democrat Republican. Like you can't talk about it. Rationally. Okay, listen. We gotta remove the politics from it for starters. We should because this is a human being thing. So I, from my world. As soon as people start talking about politics, you lose me. Yeah. Because people are dying. There's no politics involved here. This right. is bullshit. This is people. I don't know what's going on. Politics are people trying to save people yep. and making a situation better. It's so frustrating. You know, right now, politics is at a level that it's scum. It's scum what's going on right now. So aside from that, let's not get caught up in that. Exactly. Let's get caught up in what's in front of us which is people are dying, people are getting exposed, some people want to wear a mask, some people don't want to wear a mask, and you worry about yourself. All you could do is yourself. People are furious at me. Why? They're saying that black and white have attacked me again after I said it. You know, I hate, no, I don't hate it. It was a punchline for me for years. What? Anybody who heard me say it say knows that I do it for a laugh. But anybody who knows my voice and listens to me and knows my soul knows that I have 
black influences. Yeah. I've been very, very black influences. There's people who have said to me, man, I listened to the podcast, and until I saw your picture, I thought you were black. And people are mad at me because I say that we shouldn't use the word no more. That word? Black or white. That word. Yeah. Yeah, because I agree. Because when a black person says it, it gives a power to a white person. If, you know, right now, you ever date a guy? Yeah. And every time you, you've been with him for two years, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. He's got good dick. I've got, never had that. He's got good family. <laughs> for two years. He's got a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every day, every day, it's a dilemma. Every day. A flat. He left his phone at the house. He ran over his phone. Yeah. I agree. Glasses. I agree. You know, and yep. you, you tolerate it for a while. Until one day, I don't know what the point is of this story. What the fuck? We're no, about. I know what you're saying. You're like the N word is like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's if it causes problem, so much problem, just get rid of it. If it causes so much fucking problem, if you say it, it causes problem. If you say it, I feel uneasy. If she said, then just I'm not saying ban the word. I'm saying when why I, when say I was it? saying it, I was saying it to myself. What I could do. What can you do right now to help the situation? You can help your friends as much as you can. There's people that aren't eating. There's people that are struggling. Yeah. If you don't have money and you know somebody's having a bad day, call them. Yes. Call them. Check up on them. Check What's in. up? Crack a joke. Crack yeah. a dirty, fucking absurd joke. Make them giggle. Go, what are you doing right now? Yeah. You're nothing watching TV. Put your mask on and meet me in front of your house in five minutes. I got two joints. Yeah. You know? I can't tell you how much Making it Making people's me. day. That's yep. it. That's it. I went, told Lee. We went down. It was his birthday last Monday. And I didn't want to leave him alone, so I took him to Ryan Sickles with me. Have you with And you. I, I, I felt terrible. I should have got his dick sucked. I should have got him a tranny. Something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A nice he's big, scared. He's on my he, list. He's afraid. No, I mean, I trust me. I, I wanna... Would you take a blowjob? Yes. I'm I, not offering. The issue, the issue with the people he was saying is one person doesn't live in the state anymore, and the other person... Is someone who you ever, doesn't you, matter. You ever hook up with a crazy person? I just don't. Yeah. Have I ever hooked up with a crazy? Please. I am. Look a, at her. Are you kidding me? Look at her. <laughs> when you look up crazy, it's her and ton of her boyfriends smiling. All right, look. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's her and ton of her boyfriends. Like, yeah, pretty well, much. She, it's at the point where, like, I told him, I, I said I'd, I'd rather not get a blowjob than call that person. That's insane. I know. Yeah, it's not good. Well, I've had guys turn me down for being crazy. But I'm not crazy anymore. I'm healed. Look, back I, to what I, I you were saying. Wait, but I, actually, I want to say something about what you were saying because, uh, because my best friend growing up was black. <laughs> my boyfriend now is black, and like, I have never. My best friend growing up, she was Miss Ohio. She's gorgeous, black girl. She's married to a white guy. They have a son. The son is super light skinned He's almost like border albino. Like he's so light. They had to teach him not to say the N-word because he looks white. He has blonde hair. If he says it in the wrong crowd, he could get his ass kicked. But also, I have never heard her say it my whole life. And I've known her since I was 12. Like, she doesn't like the word for the reason you're saying. And my boyfriend, he doesn't really say it either unless he's, like, rapping to a song on the radio or something. But, like, he doesn't say it at all. And not there's a, I mean, obviously, like, if you're black, it's up to you, obviously. Like my friend Jackson says it, like some guys say it. But I do agree that it can create... Like once I felt entrapped into saying it, I was dating a black guy. Actually, this is hilarious. I was dating a black guy. I never heard him say it when we were dating for like, I don't know, three or four months. He never said it once. Then when we were breaking up, uh, he said, you're the one who told N-word to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know any n words i texted it and i texted it in quotes and i wrote a z because you know you can't say er and that's not what he said but my point was i was trying to say i don't know any because i don't use that word like i hate that word but he was like i can't believe you wrote that i can't believe you like he was so mad and i was like i was entrapped like i've never said it but like you entra and it was like a huge fight so i just think i mean White people should never say it, but yeah, what's the reason? It it does give the word power. It drives me crazy. I'm a, I love Biggie. I love the Ten Crack Commandments and all that stuff. <laughs> and I listen to that stuff, and he's dropping it, and I'm like, I'm singing along. 
Yeah, I guess you can't you know, do that. I've been told I'm you can't do that. Along. I heard Warning you Warning is that. one of my favorite songs. I'm singing along and I'm catching myself saying it, but you it's not in that context. Yeah. So, you know, I'm all fucked up over it. People got pissed at me. <sighs> Anybody who knows me knows what my heart is, so fuck it. You know I, you what? Know, I still got an Afro pick. <laughs> if I move to a fucking, if I move to a humidity area, wait till you see my hair. This gel disintegrates <laughs> in humidity. I like that. And my Jew comes back, my black Jew. Please tell me you have an Afro pick. Please grow your Jew back. I've always saved an Afro pick. For real? House. Yeah. It was such a part of my life. I saved it. I saved it. I saved Could it. Could you stick it in and leave it there? You got to grow it back. I used to when I was a kid. Oh, my God. And I would go to Harlem. I would stick it in there. I would put it in my back pocket. Why not? Because when you put it in your back pocket, you can still see the black hand coming out. Or I get the R. There's a hand on it? Yeah, black power. I never saw the hand on so one. I don't think it's all my... It's an it's a Afro pick yeah. with black power. I never saw that. Hand. Oh, that's cool. So I grew up in the Harlem 68, yeah. 69, and that was the idea. I'm black and I'm proud. Black power. I so like... for you to go into Harlem, you had to be a white dude with an Afro pick. Hilarious. That black power. All the, the black colors, the... the Black, green, and uh, what were the black colors? The green, yellow. I didn't know that. Black, yeah, black. yeah. Back yeah. then, yeah. how come? It's like an African flag or something? Isn't it? Oh something, yeah, yeah. So oh yeah. Black, green, and yellow or red or something, something. So when I was a kid, it was completely different. Yeah. When you went to Harlem, but when you went to Harlem, you also it was like going to a museum. You, it was back in the day. You got to learn. It was different. You really got to see. That was my thing on it. Like, I went to Harlem and was treated like a gentleman. I know kids who went to Harlem and got beat up. Really? But it was your body language. How you I walked in Harlem. If you walked into Harlem, by the time you get to 5th, 6th Avenue down there, if you got attitude by, like, 4th Avenue, you're going to get lit up. And then you stumble into fucking Spanish Harlem. And then you stumble into <laughs> Italian part of Harlem. Because all those Harlems... That's where Fat Tony Salerno's gangster fucking thing was. He was like 123. I'm, I'm not, you know, what, whatever social club. The Italian guy? Yeah, he's a gangster. But oh. around the corner were all the black numbers. Yeah. And Puerto Rican and Cuban numbers. It's like bank prison. Policy banks. <laughs> no, it's not like prison. So at the end of the day, everybody had to pay Fat Tony to do oh. work in that area. So, but beside that, I mean... I had a history lesson. Like, I could tell you thousands of stories that I learned and where I learned my appreciation for African Americans yeah. was walking on that street. And this was different then. Tensions weren't high because everybody knew where they stood. You know what, Kate? Three years ago, you didn't like me. And three years ago, I didn't like you. Let's keep it that way. We're not going to yeah. war. We're not going to say hello, goodbye to each other. Yeah. But we're just going to keep it that way. And that's what it felt like. We kept to ourselves. You keep to yourself. And everybody gets their feelings hurt. You're right. It's changed. It's changed now. There's more tension. A, a lot of tension. And, you know, people say to me, well, Aunt Joey, you should go on the road. I'd love to go on the road. And I would wear a mask, and I would drive, and I would do a thousand things. It's not that that I'm scared of. I'm scared of me. the tension in the air. Yeah. I'm scared of Lee going up and somebody going, shut up, you fucking Jew. You know, because that's what's going on. You see what Felipe posted today? What? what? There was At the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, there was like eight people fighting. Where? Just in the casino. Where? Vegas? Yeah. I, I, I honestly think people are, because of the money thing and... I honestly think a lot of people aren't get, feeling a lot of love right now. No. I, I mean, a lot of stress in the air. I've lived in my neighborhood for four years. My neighborhood is so diverse. Have you been to my house? I can't remember. No. It's like, literally, my building's mostly Asian. The next one's African. I mean, African, African, not just black. The next one's Middle Eastern. The liquor store is black dudes. It's really diverse. Not a lot of white people. You go a few blocks up, there's white people. But, like, I never had any issues Cause I, you know me, I smile at everyone. I say hi to everybody. I say hi to. It could be like a homeless guy peeing. I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, I don't care. But like, now, I've had some people start to be mean to me for no reason, and they're never white people. So it makes me feel like there's more racial tension. Like I've had people like get the fuck out of our neighborhood, and it's it's making me move. Asians are telling you, black guys, not. Asian. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I've never had an Asian. No, my building's Asian, but there's a lot of like black guys, Mexican guys, Middle Eastern guys. Like I had some black, like high school age kids follow me one night, like follow me two blocks and be like, what's up, bitch? Get out of our fucking neighborhood. Like, and I'm not saying obviously like not all black, but it's definitely never happened before this. So I feel like white people like the people who are racist now are more vocally racist and the people who are pissed about that are more vocal too and there's a lot of people in the middle like who aren't racist like us but like you're like well but i look like this so you're the enemy to some people you know it's a weird time man like i posted okay during quarantine right when uh all the riots started the protests right you know, everybody was posting about the protests and I did for a couple weeks. And then I was like, okay, it's time to, somebody has all that was being posted was protest stuff. And I was like, I just want there to be a break in it. So I posted one day a, a selfie, but I was outside my apartment building and there was a construction guy who always comes out when I take selfies, like the building manager, the maintenance guy, he always comes out. Anytime he sees me taking the selfie, like comes and stands around and watches. So I posted it. And I just put a funny caption and it, everybody was like, thanks for posting something different. But one black girl got really mad at me. She was like, this is insensitive. We're mourning the loss of our people to police brutality. And I was like, I get it, but there has to be something else. Social media has really taken a work, a turn for the worse. Oh, totally. It's over. What we use to reconnect with friends and to be a platform for us to giggle and just say things for one another out. You are looking at a different world. I agree. People are not appreciative no more. It, um, people get mad if you're I was, funny. I, I was posting the movie of the day for a while. Oh, yeah, I like that. I was getting tortured. <laughs> really? Yeah. This movie sucks? <laughs> no, not like that. Oh, like, okay. You know, you got to do this, and you have to do this movie. What about... The sound of me, like just you know, it was sound just, of me. It was just everything you did that you thought was to help people was you would get fifty complaints, and then I tweeted one thing and I got tortured. I tweeted something else that was just about the, you know, I'm I'm here with a gun waiting for the looters to kick in. You okay. an old paranoid fuck. It's people like you yeah. that are ruining this country. Oh, for protecting my seven year old with a gun. When there's a riot going on at the Sherman Oaks Galleria, <laughs> it's you know, bad. Yeah, it's 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 just so. I, I I started a Patreon. I saw that a dollar. So what I is it? Get, what do you put on it? You know what I put on it, man. I give you a warning, wake up video. I love I it. I say shit oh, to I'm you. Sign it up. You know they have little things that you could do like options, like your voice. Yeah. And you could just do a, a ten minute podcast if you want. Yep. On the day, you know, it's I however long too. you want it. Yeah. You could, uh, I, I take songs and I tell them what they mean to me, how I connected uh -huh. with those songs, the lyrics. I put pictures of my friends up. Oh, shit, I'm I wanted to give them. I wanted to give them something different than a podcast. I wanted to give them what I Behind thought about the every scenes, day. You personal, know? yeah. And as I learn more options, I'll do more, you know? Yeah. Like, I got, I, okay, every week I tell you the blunder of the week. The what? The blunder. Your blunder? Yeah. I got, oh, are you, I got, how you fuck up? Yeah, I got <laughs> I fuck up every week. <laughs> Me too. So I get this weed. It is stronger than that. Oh, God. I only smoke in the morning. Fucking Whitaker's on. I miss Gustafson. I watch Abe Lincoln against George Washington. You know, Noguera. What the hell is he talking about? Noguera against Shogun. <laughs> and then I watch Whitaker and whatever. <laughs> All right. And I went inside. I did a bong out of this weed. This guy dropped it off. He called me and he goes, I, I got to give you some of this that I grew. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, shit. It's like fucking, <laughs> it's like, and he only gave me like two joints, three joints. He goes, this is all I got for you now, but before you leave, I'm going to give you a pound of this. He goes, this is going to be the strongest strain I've ever put together. Whoa. And it's right in your name, but it's, a, it's an indica. So I put it in front of the heater during the fight. I went out there and I rolled a joint. Uh oh! I took the camera from fucking. <laughs> I went on Patreon, got the camera, you know, pushed the button that makes it flip. Okay. And I started doing my thing. What's up, cocksuckers? 
sitting here bored on a Saturday night. Yeah. When the joint's down to a roach, I realize I didn't turn the video on. Oh, <laughs> okay. This is the shit I do. Okay. So now I got to roll another joint because I can't let them down. Um. <laughs> so I roll oh another my joint. God. I am fucking gone. I got three edibles in me. I am fucking gone. And now I got to burn this other joint. Not and really. This time, <laughs> well, I got to do it. You commit. And I yeah, did yeah. that. I The video fucking worked this time. But it wouldn't down upload patreon that's the thing you got to do it on your computer it's hard from your phone no 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 i did it on the computer oh i did it on oh. my ipad oh i did it on my ipad oh. so yeah I, did, I smoked a whole joint i did the best video i ever did to find out it wasn't even turned on well i did that with my last podcast that's how stupid i am I, mean, I, I don't know if you know that notice but it, almost like every six minutes especially when i'm high i do this I'm only turning around just to make sure it's recording. Cause Is it? Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done that once, and luckily it wasn't on this podcast. But it's it, that happens, but especially when you're high. But you know what I think it is, dude? Have you gotten a lot of hate on your Patreon? No. no. I've noticed a lot of the hate I've gotten recently. I go to their page, and they're not even following me. Oh, yeah, of course. So I, I think what it is is if, if you can build your own thing, the people who actually like you aren't the ones hating you. Like there's people who just go around to hate and they're Listen, not they're probably you, never following. You want to pay a dollar to hate me? Oh yeah, then fuck please you. do. That's what I said. That, that's why I did a dollar. You should do or another level of Patreon want. where it's a like ten bucks great. a month and it's only for haters. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's for- I would charge twenty. That's bucks hilarious a month to, for hate. to hate. And you post the hate videos. Whatever you want. That's I'll a post great all idea. The video, all your racist stuff towards Spanish people. <laughs> bring it out. Get it out. I know you're living in an apartment with twenty cockroaches. You know, I would love that. Let's would, do a hate treon. A hate treon. Yeah. I, I, would, <laughs> I would have people fucking send hate, you know, just to <laughs> let it out. If that's what it means for you to be a better person. Yeah, man. Let it out. You know what? This sounds cheesy to say, but that's the reason I think I connect with the guy that I'm seeing. Because I feel like I connect with anybody in this business who gets kind of like made fun of or like shit on a little extra. I connect with them. I really do. Like, everybody I love in the business has a struggle. Or has, like, that was weird. There's a ghost in here. Has a struggle or has, like, you can uh, just turn it on the side. Whatever, it's fine. Has something going on. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have COVID. I, I'm positive. But, uh, yeah, because I feel like that. It's like, if you're different at all, you think outside the box, people hate. But they help you. Because in like really real talk, they boost your algorithm with their comments. Like every mean comment is one more person who sees your post because it boosts your post. So in the end, they're helping you make money. It's uh, it's really crazy. I, I'm not, you know what? I used to feed into it. Now Me too. I have I have I have to have twenty percent on my Facebook to definitely have mental health. <laughs> oh, for sure. And Twitter, mental Minimal. health. I get some emails on Facebook that are very scary. And then they come back and go, sorry about all that. I went off my medication. Me program. too. Are you serious? Yeah, I had a stalker do that. I had a stalker. Me. Sorry about that. I was on a bender. Holy shit. Sorry about that. I was really drunk when I wrote this last night. To you. I get I that all it. the time. I won't answer him back because I know there's a reason. Nobody just, I, I, there's no reason for me to open up an email on Facebook Messenger or Facebook and have pure hate. I don't even answer it or I'll give them a thumbs up. Then two days later, they'll roll back and go, me too. hey man, I went off my medication. I don't really feel that way. I just wanted to attack you because yeah. you didn't play. You shook me all night long with <laughs> Dean or some shit. You know, it's really weird. Or the other way. I'll get like three, Kate, you're the best. Kate, you're so funny. Kate, I love you on the church. Go suck a fucking dick, you whore. Like, the next one is so mean. And I know. I'm like, I saw what? something with you on Facebook about two months ago where somebody went after you, and I, had, and I went to his public message. Aww. And I go, hey, man, get it together. I love you, Jerry. If you don't like something, you know, I'm from the school. If you don't like it, turn it off. I don't like Saturday Night Live. I've never have liked it. That doesn't mean I'm going to get on their Yelp page and write a paragraph. Right? Me neither. I just don't, I'm not going to make somebody feel bad if I don't like their product. Unless yeah. they ask me to try to force it down my throat. No, I don't want to be a Scientologist. 
You know what I'm saying? No, I don't want to do no. it. No, no I don't give a fuck if Joe. I don't give a fuck about Martian oh. meat. I don't give a fuck about Martian that. meat. Yeah, that's a new thing. They're Is that Martian. real? Yeah, all Martian. These, they just captured them. What do you think they did with the meat? That meat that tastes funny. There's no more <laughs> lizard meat. Alien meat. Now it's Martian oh, meat. Look at Lee. Look okay. at me going. Oh my god. What? I think I had some. Yes, you did. Oh, I'm sure. I, I oh. do love how no one's talking about that, by the way. What's the, that? I they, know. They, they admitted that there were aliens, and everyone just so freaked out and pissed off. They're like, right? we'll get to this later. Like, Dude, they admitted I, that we have, uh, we have UFOs. You yeah. know what? And guess what? Nobody cares about UFOs now. We've known about it for what 50 fuck? fucking years. We've told you we've seen them. You denied them. You've played games with us. You know, like I told Florentine here one time, the highest, <laughs> the highest place to see was where I took you. That hotel in Edgewater that we stayed at in Jersey. Wait. The weekend you went back yeah. with me, Georgia, yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. That's the number one place to see uh, satellites in the country is the New York skyline. Satellites or UFOs? UFOs. I wonder if they go to New York. They fly. Of course they do. They fly. People see shit all through those buildings. Dude, I probably fucked the alien in New York. You don't know what they look like. They could have people skin on. There's a lot of fucking weirdos in New York. I feel like some of them were at our table at that Chinese joint. <laughs> Oh my God. What have you fucked an alien? <laughs> I hope I fucked the alien. Do you know how offended I would be if aliens were here and I haven't fucked one? Like none of them. I haven't been abducted yet. What the fuck? I'm a any, specimen. I, I want to know if any guy has taken you serious about the boyfriend because when I haven't I, announced when, it till this. Really, and, when I was rocking and rolling, <laughs> like if I came up to you and said, "Kid, I got an eight ball. You coming back to the hotel with me?" You'd say, "Yeah." On the way there, you'd say, "Hold on, let me call my boyfriend." And I tell you, put the phone down. Forget the boyfriend's done tonight. He's fired. <laughs> I just filed the fucking motion. I He's know. not going to know nothing about you till 6 in the morning. You know. Yeah. Like, I know. Have, have, has anybody called you and tried to hook up with of you? Of course. And you said to them, Lots of people. I, I got a boyfriend. Yeah. Right? I just, it's the easiest did thing. Really? I really did. Yeah. In fact, this is funny. This is actually how we became a couple. Uh, he won't care if I tell us. Right at the beginning of this, like we were talking a lot. We were really like talking every night and then there was one night he was out i was out we both we hadn't talked in a few hours which sounds crazy but like we've been texting every like couple hours right we hadn't talked and a guy hit me up who i've gone out with before but not hooked up with and i like had a crush on this guy like i would have gone out with him again so he hit me up and said hey uh, if you're in the neighborhood, I'm having a party at my spot. I got a bunch of people coming over. We're getting some Molly. It's going to be a good time. You should come through. And I was like, man, I'd love to. But I knew this dude was going to FaceTime me or call me or something. And I didn't want to lie. So I just told the other guy, I was like, I started seeing this guy. And I really, I think it's kind of serious, but it's not. But like, I, I feel weird about doing it. He was like, oh, you're in love. And I was like, I don't know what it is, but I just, I think we should like wait a week or two and see what happens. <laughs> and then I go home that night and he FaceTimes me and he tells me a story about how he went to a dinner that night and he was like a solo guy at a couple's dinner and his friend had brought a girl for him and he didn't know it was going to happen. And she wanted to go home with them. And he was like, uh... I'm kind of talking to this girl. I really so that's how we ended up not seeing other people was because we ended up both turning down sex. Like <laughs> it's like crazy for you me. You tell your grandkids one day. Yeah, so it was like <laughs> just by accident. But honestly, I've avoided situations where I'd be tempted. Like there's been a night or two we've had a fight. Maybe like you know who you know who hits me up or somebody hits me up, and I would normally go, but I I've just been not going. I know I'm weak. <laughs> so I stay home. At least you're honest, man. How do you, how has this love changed you in a way? What are you thinking? Is it, does it, is it taken away from your comedy a little bit? I worry about that. But there's a lot about of jokes it, about him. Right. But I can't say who, but like, there's a lot of material there. I just can't do you it. You know, it's so funny because I've been here a long time. Yeah. And I see the evolution of women. And, a girl would get into comedy, 23, 24, best piece of ass. I had her, you know, had her best time. She's beautiful. And she does comedy. She gets a special road, the whole thing. 
And then maybe she'll date a comic for a year, and that doesn't work out. Yeah. And then one day you bump into her, and she's like, I, I met a guy. And it's like completely different from her world. Maybe he's a writer. Maybe he's an electrician. Yeah. On a set, you know. And, it, and then I hate to say this. And this is the only. I'm it's scared. Not a, it's not a knock <laughs> I have for women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a knock whatsoever. But yeah. guess what? Your ovaries come calling. Oh, hell no. I'm not having kids. Women's ovaries. This guy snipped. Come calling. No. I don't care. I'll give you my sperm and you can put it in there with a syringe. <laughs> you know, you'll still have a bad. I don't want a kid. You'll still all. have an afro and, you know, you just I tell mean, them whatever you need. But my point is, it's so weird that <laughs> I've seen, and I could tell you by name, but it's nobody's business. Yeah. I've seen tons of women. I have to. Be great for give it fucking hard and then their ovaries come calling love comes calling and stand up is now number two and it should be because your child is number one i don't want a kid but i will tell you like i changed a little bit of how i was behaving just because he has a kid and i haven't met the kid or anything but like if his kid is following me on social media i don't want to have my ass out you know so i've been a little different but the cool thing is, like, this guy's done what he wants already with his career. Like, he'll do more, but he's like, he wants me to succeed. So, like, now I can still do whatever I want. Like, this tour, he hates it. Well, he doesn't hate it, but he doesn't want me really staying at truck stops and camping. And, oh. like, I was going to invite my fans, like, for $1,000, you can camp at my site. Oh, and he was geez. like, You're please. You have the worst ideas. What the hell, Lee? I need money, dude. Just, I know he has money, but I won't take his money. That's, like, I, that's, the other that's thing. one of my least favorite parts about dating is when a girl's like, yeah, I'm just going to go camping across the country. And you care about them. And you don't want to, like, and you're not really angry, but you care about them. And they say something like that. And you're just like, and then they, you, you get mad when he gets mad. I'm not mad, but, like, I can camp, you know? When does this camping thing fucking start? August 1st. And where does it go from? Okay, so what we're doing is going from here to Nashville, but we're stopping uh, a bunch of locations like Utah, Estes Park, the Rockies. I might do, I'm trying to do a comedy work show, like a one night. Cause they're if open. they open. Yeah, they're open. But Are they open? Yeah, but, I mean. It's not downtown. The other one? The other one. I don't know. The, south, the west side, south side. That's what I'm I not heard. sure. But then we're going to uh, New Mexico, Oklahoma City, uh, Ozark, Memphis, Nashville. And I'm going to do the Hollywood pool party at truck stops. TA is going to like pay for all our gas and give us like food and showers. So I'll do that there and interview truck drivers. And it'll be a pay-per-view live stream. So for like five bucks, you can watch. For a little more, you can engage. You need to do a video from the truck stop showers those have to be disgusting no they're amazing are they really you never showered at a truck stop no dude they're so clean no it's like a hotel really? yeah those guys cabs like i've slept in a in a 18 wheeler the cab is like a hotel room not quite as big but yeah wow okay. they're dope i had no idea yeah i'm excited and then we're gonna camp at koas so it's every other night truck stop koa truck stop koa i'm just worried about the I'm worried about you. You know, there's a lot of, uh, like Crazy I said, people. there's no COVID. It's more the unsettling of the air. And yeah. So I just want you to promise us you'll be careful. I will. Bring the gun. <laughs> I and, don't have uh, a gun. <laughs> you know, can you put one of those things on your pussy like they did in the old days with a lock? Oh, uh, a chastity belt? Chastity yeah, belt. Do, I can do that. You let's, buy it, I'll do it. No, no, we'll, we'll look it up online. <laughs> we'll duct tape it. A little chastity belt, your asshole will cover that too. Let's look and, it up. And then see if we get your chastity belt. So she's not going to shit for a week? Just in case 10 fucking truckers rip your pants off on the site. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> and fucking they go to fucking the little monkey. And no. then we'll put like a throat block in you too. Like a little, <laughs> Joey, like a, like no. a little goalie net in your mouth. <laughs> Oh. So they can't put their dick all the a way. A goalie net? It's just over here. Like, That's you hilarious. You just suck on it like this. That's so funny, like actually. A little, like a little Korean I don't want it dick. anywhere near. No, I'm going to have the, I'm gonna have a hockey like a hockey mask that's covered. <laughs> for real, they can't get in. It's going to be covered with netting for COVID. <clears throat> and truck drivers, they'll fuck you in the ears. So you got to put like cotton <laughs> in the ears. Because they'll put Nose. the cotton right in. Those truck drivers don't give a fuck. They do meth. Man. 
They no do. No fuck in the armpit. They don't Men, give a fuck. Not. Oh. It's going to be very safe. And you I'm bringing... But I don't have no long I'm... hair on the armpits. Cause no, I got no hair. Because they'll double it up. No come in your elbow <laughs> fucking <laughs> thing. You never got... No. Camp- Nobody ever came in your elbows? That's a good deal. Uh-uh. When your arms stick together like it's this for an hour. You're like, hands up. What happened? It's like titty fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. an arm. <laughs> no, I have not had that. No, I'm bringing a follow car with two people to shoot. And actually, like, one person, so this, the, the reason I'm doing it is because I'm working with a company that sells, uh, like, basically event ticketing for digital now that we're there. But I don't want to do stand-up that way, personally. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are you going to take a lead from the president and all the governors? Are you going to bring a deaf person with you to do the translation? Are they all busy? You know one? i never seen I more want fucking one. deaf translators haven't worked this long <laughs> since fucking 1922. And they're the worst. I don't even know what the fuck they're saying. Dude, I love the deaf translators. They're fun. You don't speak sign language. No, no, I love it. Noises and faces with a face. And not one of them is attractive. Not one of those fucking. Not one of those fucking. I'm telling you. This is your next trend. (laughs) Listen to me. Not one of those fucking people. Yes, they are. A fucking hand doing anybody. Even deaf people are like, what the fuck are they saying? They're doing (laughs) things like this, like fucking land. They're never like deaf. It, it does seem unfair. Like, you know. I like, know. What about blind people? What about if you they fucking. They can hear you. All right. They can, no, they can't hear you. They, blind yeah, people you're right. can, they can hear you. Hear you. <laughs> but they can't see you. How come it's always got to be for fucking deaf people? My phone has blind translation. What about a deaf person with a dog? That's what I want to see. You've seen Doing that. Doing hand signals with a dog. Where's the safety dog? <laughs> Where's the safety dog? She's deaf. Where's the dog? I don't know, man. I, I All I know is I, I have not seen any safety dogs oh. flying. Nothing pisses me off in these speeches. And then something. Yeah, Garcetti gave a speech that he had like plan B. Like they had a switch, like time out. And another deaf guy came out like from, from ringing the bell. Shut at up. The church. He's out there fucking. Because Garcetti will give you an ear beating. I don't the know. The lady was like, fuck you. I gotta, I'm done. My fingers are. I burned 18 <laughs> calories. I've been doing this. How great would it be to learn sign language just enough to get hired for one speech and then just do whatever the fuck you like, do your whole well, how, like. How great would it be if you had a comedy school and you gotta like, either you became a comic or you became a fucking. Deaf translator. Listen, can I talk to you for a second? I've been watching <laughs> some of your comedy shows and. You really don't got it, but I think you got something for deaf people. If you don't talk, you can really be entertaining. Jump Why are you looking down. directly at me? With this? Light your You're lights. No, dog. no, no. Light your eyebrows on fire. You know, shit like that. That'll work. That'll you know work. Yeah. No, I'm not. Well, have, you, have, have you seen the videos of the of the translators who don't know what they're doing? They don't. That's None what I'm of them do. About. There are videos. That's what I'm saying. That's it's what a I'm saying. Learn enough None to get do. hired and then do whatever you want. Like make them deaf fake. people at home going. I don't know what this fucking COVID. What's COVID? Hey. They're over there making those. You ever see the chubby yeah. black chick with the big glasses? <laughs> I think she's the worst. She's who? the worst. Who? She's the worst. The chubby black chick with the glasses. She talks or signs? Signs. She's oh. the worst. She's like the chick from uh, the white hair chick. And you should wear a mask. And the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch any of the politics shit. White no, Check. it's not politics. It's on a world news tonight. You're the only one who watches the news, Joe. I think you're literally the only person left who watches the news. I watch 6 and 6.30. <laughs> I, I avoid the news. I want to know news. what's going on in my area. I want to know. I want to know what's going on nationwide, even though I know they're bullshitting me. I don't want to know shit. I know they're bullshitting me. I don't know who's what telling What you really you. have to do is go on three channels and make a hypothesis. <laughs> but guess what? I don't have that type of time. So what I assume was people are getting sick, people are dying. What can I do? Not hang out in big crowds. Not talk to dirty people. If I smell COVID, turn around. If I smell COVID. Yeah, you can smell it. I smelt yeah. it. I, I went somewhere yesterday and I smelt it with the mask. No. Shut up. That was your own fart you smelled no. at Trader Joe's. I'm not going to say where I went yesterday. <laughs> but I'll give you a hint. It was in Burbank. And I walked in with the mask and they had all the doors shut. And the air had that warmth to it. COVID breeds. Come on. And they're walking around with no fucking mask on. Jesus. What? Where's this at? Come on. Say it. I'm not going to say it. But I, it's pretty fucking bad. I just know this. I, I know that. I know that. Listen, <sighs> I was thinking of stopping this podcast when COVID hit. Because, no. Yes, because I, I couldn't live with myself. I quit it. If somebody came in here and got sick, it's not for me. I don't have that type of. Ten years ago, I would have sprayed COVID in your eye. I don't give a fuck. I would have put it in your drink. But now, 
I have a wife. COVID would have been the least of our problems. Yeah, with you. Oh, I snorted COVID. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, fucking COVID. COVID is dick. I would have rubbed it on my balls and pissed it in your face. First, <laughs> I would have. I would have packed the pellet in my dick, and when I come, it would hit your pellet, and it blow up with COVID. Then the cum would come over it oh, and really activate it, like bromo salsa, like alpha <laughs> salsa. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm really petrified of that. I would love to go out and do comedy. But guess what? Even social distancing comedy, I'm not into doing. I don't want to put that many people together. I have nothing that important to fucking say. No. Okay? I really don't. If I don't get two weeks of proper training before Salt Lake City, wise guys. You're gonna, not going to be fourth, good anyway. No. I'm yeah, not going to really be good. Why would hard. I want to let people see me in yeah. my worst situation? Yes, I could be entertaining. I could. No, it's hard as shit. But I'm not going to be $25 worth entertaining. Yeah. And I'm not going to be $35 worth entertaining. So why are we going to do this? I'd yeah. rather take my time off, move, get my life together, get my family situated, let Lee go see his family, let Lee decide what he wants to do. And somewhere along that, where I'm going, comedy open up, and I'll start right back. I'm so excited about restarting. Me too. Going to, I'm going to go buy the Judy Carter book. No, wait, I have it. I'll give it to you. I'm going to go buy it. I got it, it my house. I'm going to read it from scratch, and I'm going to just do and fall in love with it. And I get I'm gonna that. take like three months just to fall in love with it. No gigs. Just to, no responsibility. Yeah. Kate, okay, you're doing a room tonight? Yeah, swing by and do 10. I'll let you close it. I'll give you 100. I don't even want it. Yeah. Let me just come down and do the 10. Just to build up again, build some good credibility with the... With karma, you know, get that good comedy karma. Back, Got to. Help out some people Got in some to. rooms. Yeah. And then go back on the road. But where I think I'm going to move, I'm access to 20 comedy clubs without taking yeah. a fucking plane. So I could drive to a lot of stuff. So I'm very excited about that. I'm That's excited what, for I'm, you. I'm excited about the second, you know, like you always, I, I'm going back to law school. But I'm going to do it right this time. Yep. I already went for 29 years. I've been lingering at law school, like hanging on to people and talking yeah. to people and asking questions. Now I'm going to do comedy how I wanted to do it. Oh, yeah. I might switch from being dirty. Fuck it. Why not? I might become Hysterical. John Mulaney. I would I, love that. Be the next have, Jim Gaffigan? I have so many opportunities. <laughs> hot pockets. <laughs> I'll talk about hot pockets and lighting bacon and. Yeah, but how you... I give bacon to Jews on purpose. <laughs> you know, no. I'm out there giving out bacon to Jews. I don't give a fuck, Jack. Who else can we offend? <laughs> yeah, you know, I I wonder if there's a different style. Yeah. I wonder if I'm, I've been watching a lot of Lenny Bruce lately, nice. and I'm going back to, like, I like that 60s. He calls everybody a cat, see? That's oh. so I ran funny. into this cat, see? And he was pretty cool, you see? I like that, like that rhythm he had. He had, like, a jazz to his stand up. Nobody has that anymore. I love Letty Verse. We all have Netflix comedy now. We all are Netflix comics now. We don't have that jazz to us. No yeah. More, that relaxation, that. I'm eliminating all that. I'm taking all that out of my life. So it's over. Now I'm going to be better than ever. I'll tell you, those shows I did, the weekends I did, like it was the most fun I've had in so long. Because you can't do your old shit. You can't go on stage and be like, oh, Tinder. It's not irrelevant. It's like you have to talk about now, but you don't have time to build all new material. So, like, it was really fun to just go up. And, like, I got new bits just out of what's happening right now and being angry and I know, being passionate. I, I already know, you know? What my opening bit is going to be. Yeah. Who's got toilet paper left? <laughs> you know? What was the toilet paper for? People are dying. And you're buying toilet paper. I Can know. anybody give me the fucking logic behind that? It's so fucking dumb. Toilet paper was gone. Nobody said nothing about toilet paper. I didn't stock up. I stocked Ooh. up on baby wipes, tampons, and... Uh, you should have seen wipes. the gun spots in Burbank. Yeah. Oh, I saw. Oh, you no, I saw. You would have fucking died. I drove by one day and I go, whoa, 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 whoa. No, dude, it's crazy. So it's scary. We Hollywood have people scary. are buying guns and it's a disease. I can see if we were getting attacked. Yeah, but day. my neighborhood, people were like. I heard you tell scary. me that you saw a naked guy with a Fidel, Fidel mask, Castro mask, mask riding down Hollywood Boulevard at like one in the morning on a bicycle in the middle of the road. Naked. That's when it's time to pack up your bags. Get the and go, fuck. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. something is not right. Yeah, but you know, I feel like in a way, to, like for me, I mean, you remember, I told you before this, I was burnt out on the dating shit. I was feeling a little just like I wanted to change it up. And then this happened. And then now it's forced me to like come up with other things. So now I've got like a whole new plan for like digital stuff. But if, if this hadn't happened, I would just kept doing the same shit. And now it's like, I feel like my life's going the way it's supposed to be. Like this elevate, and I feel like a lot of people, you know, we all sat around depressed at the beginning. I fucking drank. And it's funny, like you were saying, like you're tweeting all night. I probably didn't sleep for a week. Like I was, I was alone. All my friends who have families didn't want to hang. I had like two people to see. I have a friend with HIV who was not afraid because he thinks whatever he's taking for that is keeping well, him. Well, the COVID people, only only 4% have been affected. Then uh, they haven't. People with HIV, have yeah. not really, it's been really low. Yeah. I think HIV topples COVID. Get out of here. You it does. It's, yeah, whatever they're taking yeah. for the HIV. In fact, it was funny. At one point, he was like, do you want to just take my stuff? I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. But, yeah, I think the yeah. But I was like, I was just really depressed. But I was also, then after about uh, four weeks of that, I was like, okay, maybe this is like whatever higher power there, or whatever's out there is like, hey, you've been wanting to start fresh. Here it is. And that's why I didn't do my podcast for a while because I was like, I really was falling in love with this guy and I was like, I don't want to fuck it up. Like every time I talk about a guy on my podcast, it ruins it. And I couldn't have guests and I think Zoom is weird. So I was just like, you know, just going to take a break and not feel guilty about it and get my shit together. You know what, man, I think... When I went home last year to shoot The Sopranos, when it started hitting me how monotonous my life was out here. Yeah. What? It was so revolved around work and not going to a restaurant with my buddies anymore and just going, give me the fucking menu. Right. When I went home, I realized that my friends go out every night. Yeah. At 930, they're looking at their clocks. They're like, ooh, it's getting late, and that's fine. <laughs> They're fifty-five. Yeah. But for two right. hours, we sat there, we ate, we talked, and I did that every night. I would go over the over, I'd take the ferry over, and I'm like, you know what? I think this is what I miss. Me too. You know, I was doing two podcasts a week, or three shows at the store, or two podcasts a week, and a weekend at a club, or two two places and two different nights. Now, I didn't get into comedy to sit at home. No. But it felt like comedy had just... I was disenchanted with comedy since I shot the Netflix special. Yeah, I felt that. When I came back from Vegas, I was disenchanted yeah. completely. If it was up to me, I would have fired everybody and started from scratch. Yeah. I took a little sabbatical. I dedicated myself to the store. Yep. God, that new shit was fire, though. Huh? Your, your stuff that you were doing after that was so yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't give a fuck no more. I know. It was amazing. You really couldn't do nothing to me. I didn't really want to be on Netflix. I didn't want to be on HBO. I yeah. didn't want to be you on care. Amazon. You're having fun. I'm having fun. You know what? I'll get somebody. I'll pay somebody 50 bucks. Fucking tape me for 10 minutes. Put it on YouTube. That's just as good as an <laughs> HBO special yeah, these man. days. Just it as is. good. It is. Just as good as an HBO special. It's it's really more people have YouTube. Yeah, than more people have fucking yeah. YouTube. So it's, true. it's like uh, I just, I've accepted what's coming. And that's what a lot of people have to do. And I said the other day, I spoke to three people. I'm not going to say what their names are. They're powerful people in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One guy FaceTimed me because something's going on with his phone. And he wouldn't make eye contact with me on the FaceTime. Why? He kept rubbing his head and telling me what's going on. And then I go, oh, sit down and look at me for a second. He goes, what's up? I go, first off, you're telling me about everything that's going on wrong with your life. Let me take a minute and tell you all the good things you did with your life. Yeah. You did this, you did this, you did this, you did this, and you did this. When I go to this comedy club, I see your name on the wall. So before you take yourself into this deep hole that's not worth it, because we're blaming each other. We're blaming ourselves for some of them. This wouldn't yeah. have happened. This wouldn't have happened if I worked for my father. Bitch, you, you didn't want to work for your chills. father. Please. You just gave me chills. Please, you didn't want to be an editor. Sorry. This, uh, well, if I was an editor, I would have a job now. I would be in an office. No, you wouldn't. You'd be editing from the fucking house. You know, 
Like, people really don't know what they have. So before you start following... God, that's true. What, what do they call that? Wallowing? Wallowing. Wallowing. Yeah, it's self-pity. That's what it's called. Wallowing yep. and self-pity about your fucking $1,200 check, about your fucking $300 unemployment that they got to cut. I want you to take that time. And I want you to... This is a time to reevaluate. Yeah. Look at the things you have done. You went to college on your own nickel. You paid your loans on your own nickel. You know what, man? So unemployment's giving you eighteen hundred, and your rent is sixteen hundred, and your car payment's three. You're all right. We got a problem here, but it's not a big problem. Yeah. Guess what? You know what? What are you gonna do? Watch Narcos on Netflix. Swipe it. That's eighty dollars a year right there. That water you're drinking from the thing? So fucking real. Get fucking fountain yeah. water. Didn't you drink on fountain water growing up? Dude. You fucking moron. Listen. Drink fountain so water. Right. You know what? Cut out coupons like <laughs> grandma does. Yeah. Cut it out. You know what? I started wearing 99 cent store yeah. makeup. There's I things you hair. cut out. Yeah, man. I still look good. <clears throat> I got a fucking awesome. You cannot live the regular life oh. you were living. You're going to sacrifice some stuff. I got it, I got it. You're going to sacrifice some stuff. And that's fine. True. You're going to realize, you're going to look at me one day and go, Joey, I got rid of Netflix. Well, something that, that surprised me when I moved out here is I thought it was just up. You know? I thought, what like, you, you, like, you started out low, but then you just kept making more money and more money. And oh, more hell money. no. But, yeah, yeah, like, and just because you go down for a little bit, you're going to go, like, it's going to go back up again. Like, I, 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 I was an idiot. I don't know. I just thought you would just keep going up. And that's how it was. But sometimes you don't have a job for a little bit. And L.A., like, California gets a lot of hate. I don't, I'm not leaving California because I Me hate either. California. I'm not leaving California. I love California. California. L.A., L.A. is, a, it, it feels like a business trip to me. You like, you said, like, you don't have, I have friends that I met at work, but they live 15 miles away. And in a normal city, that would be fine. But here, that's an hour and a half each way. And you just don't see each other. Yeah. And, that, yeah. And people yeah. here, it's just. This is you. You come here to, to to do business, and I think what I realized is, I did. I had a good run. You're I, not done, I, dude. I, no, I'm not. I'm not done. But I I worked on a, a few cool TV shows. I worked. I did this. No, listen, listen. You have to tell yourself like you did more than ninety nine percent of the people who come here. The minute you get paid the first time for stepping on the stage. That's what I tell myself when I get down, when I'm like, I don't have the Netflix special, I don't have an HBO. But like, okay, but I've gotten paid to play clubs, theaters, had a TV show. It, you win when you get paid the first time. I won. The thing I'll never forget, and, and I owe it all, I owe a lot to Joey, but that me doing the Wilbur, and yeah. I could go home and work at, it was weird. I, when I was going to college, I went to buy a laptop. And the guy at the Apple store was like, oh, I did video editing in LA for a little bit. I worked on a couple shows, and now I'm back here. And I'm, yep. he, he's working at the Apple Store. And when I was 18, I was like, that's never going to happen to me. He's a loser. He's working at the Apple Store. And now I'm like, you have different parts of your life. Like, yeah. maybe he's happy at the Apple Store. Also, that's the thing. Like, maybe he is happy. Like, I've had, I really believe, like, there's been moments that I know I could have taken something that would make me, like, bigger. But I didn't want it. Like, sometimes it's okay. Like, I don't know. I love doing comedy. I like making people happy. Do I want to be famous? Mm. Not really. Like, famous is hard as shit. It's very hard. And people assume you're rich when you're famous. People assume... You know, I applied for food stamps when this started. Because, like, I never got unemployment. I applied twice. The first time I applied wrong, the second time I applied right, and then ever since then it's been like a mer trying to merge the two accounts. Doesn't matter. I applied for food stamps. I couldn't get them. Like I was qualified, but I couldn't get both times I had an appointment. No one called me. Then I called. They said they have to call you back. And it was like, if, like, realistically, it's just when you're in this business, it's like what you said. If people think you get a TV show, you make it. And it's not. It's like, but but I've also learned that none of that matters. But what is making? It? That's it. Money isn't what making is it. Making Famous. It? I think making is it is making it. Money is making. What do you it think it is? Be. I think it's peace. You know what? It's peace, uh -huh. and it's making it is. I'm never gonna beat Dave Chappelle. I'm 
never going to be Kevin Hart. I'm never going to be Bill Burr. Do you care? But if I cut out just a little part, I can have my own little piece of the pie. I can care who takes the rest. I just always wanted my own little piece of the pie. If you think 15 years ago, I tell you today, stand up, I'd be in this position. I love you, Joe. I would be lying to you. I don't want to be Dave Chappelle. I never claimed to be Hell Chappelle no. or Bill Burr or Rogan or Kevin Hart. But you are as or Russell Peters funny as all that. It doesn't really matter. Funny doesn't matter. It's how you come across <laughs> to that true. audience. There's people that are horrible. You're There's right. people that are horrible and go from TV show to TV show. True. They've been on more shows that have gone down than ever. Those are the guys that get the more work. True. You know, so it's right. like uh, I've had to make peace for people the last three months. People have called me and said, hey, I'm thinking of leaving. What do you think? And I've said, you know, you better get the, get the hell out, out of here. You told me that. You I was sad when you told me. When you called me and said you should move, just go live in Nashville. Yeah. I was like. Oh man, Joey thinks I should give up. No, not I know give you up. didn't. I know you didn't not mean give it that up. way. Not give up. You might... I don't want what's going on in. Listen, shit rolls downhill, and what's happening in Seattle and Portland, we have those same type of people down here. It's scary. That are ready to go. It's so bad, you have yeah. to give this six weeks before yeah. Hollywood or downtown is. Looking I agree. like Seattle. I gotta leave. Either Hollywood, they're gonna yeah. take over the federal building in L.A. Something Scared. has to happen in L.A. Remember, when L.A. catches a cold and sneezes, when L.A. sneezes uphill, everybody catches a cold. Shit runs downhill. If shit's going on in Portland, believe it or not, Oregon borders Los Angeles, uh, California. California. So, guys, this is gonna move downward. Yeah. And if it's starting in Austin and it connects in Arizona, is this the civil war we're talking about? Is it's true. what are we talking about? Armed people walk down Louisville the other day. All these things are happening. I'm not this is a comedy podcast. I'm not telling you these things to scare you. I'm telling you these things to be aware. To it's know true. what your surroundings are, which is the most important thing in life. When you get out of your car from now on, I don't want to see you on your cell phone. If you didn't think I wanted you on your cell phone on the street before, now if I see you, I pull over and beep at you. <laughs> because there's a thousand videos out there of people looking at their cell phones and somebody coming up and punching you in the fucking head. Yeah. Well, you've known me a long time. I've never been scared. Before, and I'm leaving my neighborhood. Before you park your car, Yeah. I want you to take a ride and see if there's anybody behind the tree or anything. Yeah. There's mental health people going on out there, you know. These people who getting into arguments with people put on a mask. You see somebody without a mask across the street. Don't yell at them. You don't know where they came from. What if they haven't gotten their dick sucked? Their wife left them for the Mexican landlord, and they got their it's house true. got foreclosed for. It's true. And they're going for a walk to get anxiety, uh, anxiety air, and you go put on a mask. Let's say that guy has a fucking box cutter. You, you know, he's just his wife left him. For the guy who mows the lawn, yeah, his house is foreclosed, his business is gone, and you're going to tell him to put on a mask. He's worried about a mask. Yeah, that guy's hoping he gets hit by the COVID train. And I, yeah, he hopes, he hopes that Young Young Kim sends him a fucking <laughs> COVID missile right to his fucking head. You know what I'm saying? No, but it's true. Like, not to be like Debbie Downer. Like, yeah, this is supposed to be funny, but like. The statistics for suicide are up. The yes, statistics they are. for people being uh, 51, 50 are up. So, like, you have to check on your friends. Like, people, this is, you know, in prison, it's a punishment to be in solitary confinement. That's basically what we're telling people to do is, like, if you're you, you haven't been hugged, you said, since what, March? Yeah, no, it's not. But also, I mean, and Joey used to give me shit for it. I was pretty much, like, this is, a, I'm not good at making friends. Like comedy was good for me to make friends, but it's a lot of time in a lot of time in LA is by yourself. That's true, but you know Even what? Before this, that's true. But every time I saw you, I gave you a hug. Oh yeah, and like people need a, people need to be touched. Like like babies who aren't touched. It's like there are statistics you can read about babies who aren't touched who become criminals because like the psychosis of being touched is important. You need to feel loved. So, so. you're saying the Me Too thing is over. <laughs> 
Yeah, can touch it. Can I go it? back to hiding in the bush? You're good, Joe. Can I come out from jumping behind the bush? And man, just that shit. I running? think it is over, man. I think everything's over. Rose We're McGowan good. said something We're today. good. She's, she's fucking out of it. Oh, Kate Quigley, where can I love find you. these dates? I just want to say I, I love, love you. I love you, too. I love, I love you. you know my heart. I'm so happy you found love. Yeah. I knew for a long time that that was a gap in your heart. Everybody you met was a piece of shit. And I know. Ass. And you I'm find, shocked. you know, and again, you got to suck a thousand dicks before <laughs> the just, right dick comes. Dude, it's so funny. I came in here Jesus and shows Joey up. said, you got to, you got to suck a thousand dicks to find a prince. And I was like, hey. I tweeted that last week. But this is why we have like, uh, you're just, uh, you're my spirit animal. How many at pussies did I eat before I ate the right pussy? You tell me. 20,000 of them. 20,000. Okay, That's well, why I, the, if I you swab like that, my man. mouth with the, if you do the. The, fucking, the, COVID the, test, the COVID test, your mouth my is mouth, just oh, pregnant. <laughs> it's just gonna come up assholes. Like, listen, you don't have COVID. You have like an asshole growing in your. Who was yeah. the guy who said he got throat cancer from eating pussy? Michael, Michael Douglas. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I feel different. I think it's good for your throat cancer. Yo, no, it I is. I eat pussy. You gotta hear me sing the next day. I'm like Tom <laughs> Jones. It's not unusual to make love to anyone. Oh, that's da, 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 awesome. Da, da. No, it's real. Uh, Where can they find you, Kate Quigley? You guys can find me on social media. You know, Where are these toys going to be at? Kate Q Funny. But, but uh, the website is tixar.com, T-I-X-R. So the whole tour will be on there. If you want to watch it, it'll be on there. It'll also be on my YouTube at She's Kate also going to put a camera in her tent, and that's a special $10. Shut up, Joe. You can see her on grass <laughs> and put little bras on. And He's right. Play with her also, little monkey. I bought you know. a water bottle that you can pee into and filter it and drink it. That's oh, worst dollars. case scenario. That's, that's, that's $100, listen, Joe. That's $100. You just ate a Holiday Inn Express. And listen to me. If you drink it, <laughs> if you drink her that's piss. That's a continental breakfast. If you drink her piss from the camping trip, I'll give you two cash and enter you in the contest along with Lee to who takes a fart in the face with Lee. So Lee doesn't have to do it alone. <laughs> That's how we're going to end the podcast. I got the chick. I'm, she's eating as we speak. I went over and bought like four miles worth of groceries, marshmallows. Who, what are you I, talking about? I'm, I have a, uh African-American woman who weighs about 480. What? She's going to come here on camera and fart in Lee's now? mouth. Now? Not tonight. Oh. To end the I'm podcast. like, I'm staying. <laughs> this, this has been going on for seven we're years. I'm going to put a bib on his shirt. The whole thing. I'm going to put a bib on him. He calls me every other day with like a new idea. I'm going to give an anti diarrhea maggot. Just he has a little bit of diarrhea. Just the no, whole, don't just, do that. Let her, let her diarrhea right let me in his face. Something. I'm, I'm making God, him a millionaire. I'm his manager. You know what I mean? <laughs> this Wait. guy fucking couldn't manage himself. I'm yeah, but you always say I'm going to be a millionaire, and then you say the first one's for free. You have the to first eat one's ass. Be for free. You can't leave town without him eating one ass. Yeah. Can we please set it up? I will I will pay what for we'll it. What we'll do is this. With my food sale. I'm not, I'm not one, doing a hooker ass. The first one is just a, a fart to the face, okay? And that's it. And then you get some laughs. You get a half a million. You get a million views. You get some t shirts made. I'm a million I survived the fart made. to the face. You know that's the name of the website. I survived the fart to the face. Watch him get. He's gonna. He's gonna get. He, the he's flu. not writing this down because he's a cocksucker. I'm not, I'm not getting farted in the face. Will you please then, eat an ass? I will then, get you a hot chick. And then we're gonna do a pay per view event where like, yeah. you know, like, people get fucked up by chubby chicks and shit. Like <laughs> you get a chubby chick to zip line, and you're gonna eat your mouth like this, and she just lands with a pussy in your mouth, and if you. Catch a pubic hair, you win a hundred dollars, whatever. How about this? I'll start an OnlyFans, and it's two hundred a month. And all you do is eat ass. Sure. Yes. Two hundred is cheap. That's too much. No, it's too much for. Because we're gonna, we're not gonna get you. Each person is two hundred. Kate Quigley looking bitches. I'm gonna get you ayahuasca looking bitches. <laughs> We're broken hips, recovering from fucking allergies. Oh. Uh, they just got shot in the leg in Vietnam. One of those bitches. Just now? Just now. The assholes kind Death of Death row bent. women. Death you, you row inmates. A, you ever see like when the asshole drags? I'm what? What do you mean you drag? Of... You haven't seen that? Yo. I'm going to get you one of those. Oh, what is God. It? How does an asshole drag? Don't you worry got, about you it. Gotta look if you don't good. know, you're never going to know. If you what don't you know, you're see? never eating the ass. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you like a selection of asses. I got it all planned out. Yeah, but none of them don't sound good. It sounds like fucking the it's worst. It's going to be great. I'll throw a few hot ones in the mix. Let me tell you some asshole has the highest... Content of vitamin C. A lot of people. It's true. Know. And ginger. And ginger. So you'll be I'd fine. I'd rather eat ginger. Anyway, forget about Lee getting fought in the face. The church <laughs> is brought to you by DraftKings. All right. NBA, MLB, if they don't have fucking uh, COVID, 
MMA, golf, <laughs> DraftKings has it all. Plus pay it props. Like how many players are going to die this season? <laughs> Joey. Open, live betting and more. Listen, whether you like it or not, you're gambling your life away every time you go down the corner for a fucking thing of milk. <laughs> every time we talk to that young kid jumping up and down, you might get COVID. So you might as well fucking go in deep. If you're walking on ice, you might as well dance. DraftKings is the answer. I mean, look, a Thursday tomorrow, live from Disney World. I hope fucking uh, the guy from the Clippers didn't escape to go to a fucking strip club again. You got the Clippers against the Lakers, and you got the Pelicans against the Jazz, all right? To celebrate, DraftKings is going to give you $25. You're sitting there going, Joey, how? How are you going to place a $25 bet on which team will be crowned the champion at the end of the NBA season? That's the team with the less COVID. That's who's going to fucking win that. <laughs> Do it before tip-off tomorrow. Because by the end of the season, they're going to have five guys on the The court. most players were still alive. Three on one, two on the other one. Oh, the shit. one that's got three got a broken elbow. That's why they're letting them play. The COVID <laughs> don't let them heal. At the end, and, and by, by November, it's going to be three guys on the court. Watch. All right, so what we're going to do is this. <laughs> Whether you Christ. want baseball, basketball, MMA, or golf, DraftKings has it all. They got the player pops. They got the live betting. And they got more. If DraftKings Sportsbook isn't available where you live yet, don't forget about the DraftKings Fantasy app. For this weekend's golf tournament, they're offering a share of, ready for this? Yeah. One million dollars. Shut up. One million dollars. So listen, I've been around the block on this, and there's one thing I can tell you. There's a reason DraftKings is America's number one sportsbook, and they really are. They're safe, secure, and they're reliable. If you want to get in on some action this weekend or tomorrow, download DraftKings Sportsbook now and use code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, plus for limited time for the church motherfucking family, all new users get a sign-up bonus of a G-Note LaRue. That's a grand when you get DraftKings Sports app and use code CHURCH. Only... <coughs> That's a COVID making a comeback. Only... <laughs> At DraftKings Sportsbook. And here's the part the lawyers want me to say. You got to be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. Deposit bonus requires a 25 time play through. Restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling <laughs> problem, there's help for you, okay? You call 1 800 Gambler. And if you're in Indiana, you call 1 800 9 with it. And tell them Uncle Joey sent you. If you're suicidal, like we talked about, call 1 800 uh, the suicide number. But <laughs> let me tell you something, cocksuckers. <laughs> if you ain't suicidal and you ain't got a gambling problem, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code CHURCH. And fuck it. If you're dying, you owe money. Who gives a fuck? They can't search you from the grave. Yeah, that's what are you, up. John Wayne? They went after fucking John Wayne. Because he said fucking Indian 30 years ago. He's been dead for 18 fucking thousand years. What are you going to do to him? He's in the fucking grave. DraftKings.com Sportsbook app. Right now. Today. DraftKings Sportsbook. Today, motherfuckers. What's it called? What's the thing? Download? Church. Yeah. Download DraftKings Sportsbook now and use code CHURCH. And the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And use code quote, use code church. All right, DraftKings. That's the sports book of the United States, and only New Jersey, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. I love you guys. I want to thank the beautiful and talented. I love you. And next time we'll see us, you'll be married. No, so no, if you no. You want to no. get your dick sucked? No, get the I roofie won't. pills out no. now. Because Kate's still Ow. available, but not really. Oh. And uh, where do I they go for you. your dates? I love you. Uh, you guys can just go to katequigley.com or all my social media. Okay. And Lee, I love you, cocksucker. Love you too. And you guys, I'll see you Monday. Don't forget, we're on Spotify. I also want to give a shout out to my little brother. His father got me into comedy. The Sheet Metal Workers of 104. My <laughs> man Jimmy Jr. Handy up there. Running fucking things. Ooh. And don't forget, patreon.com slash Joey Diaz. A dollar. Oh. That's it. I want a dollar. That's it. Don't send no more a dollar, and we'll get the party started from there. 
Maybe in a month we'll start doing fucking uh, Great idea. one joint videos. I'll whack off for you. I'll shave my fucking asshole <laughs> hair. Christ. I'll shoot a bow and arrow at your mother. You know me. I'll do anything oh for a dollar. God. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Lee, kick this motherfucking meal, Tarzan. Tarzan. <laughs>